We're talking rocket science. No, we're not. We're talking about how to light a fire. Now, the reason I think it's so important to talk about fire in this Outdoor Basics series is that we as humans are the fire species. We are the only animal that manipulates and uses fire. And we've learned that and we pass it down from generation to generation. But if you haven't been taught how to make a fire, if you're new to the outdoors, you haven't gone camping a whole lot, then it's kind of a daunting process. So I wanted to walk you through the basics, show you a few different ways you can stack the fire and how you can light it and keep it going with just a single match. Here are the basics of what you need to start the fire. You need an ignition source, something to light the fire, like a match. Then you're gonna need tinder, and that's really fine stuff that's light and fluffy that you can use to start the first flame with. Then you're gonna need kindling, which is slightly larger, maybe about as big as your thumb. Then you need fuel, and I'm talking bigger stuff like these logs over here. Prepping all of this wood is going to be most of the work in lighting a fire. Honestly, you're gonna spend 90, 95% of the time going into the forest, finding stuff that's nice and dry, and getting that ready. So if there's anything you take away from this video, it is spend your time prepping, and most importantly, get really good dry tinder. That's the stuff that's the smallest, lightest, and fluffiest, because if you, especially if you just have one match, you're gonna light that match, and you want this to burn, and burn for a little while so that it catches the kindling, and then you put on all the larger logs. Now let's talk about tinder. Tinder is so incredibly important, and I have a whole bunch of different things that can be used as tinder here in front of me. But what some people do is they think they can take a match, even a beefy survival match like this, they think they can just light it. Ooh, let's, let's light this puppy. And then they can just put it under any wood they have and eventually it's gonna burn. And who knows, maybe this will burn. If it does, <laughs> I will. That's how you make a fire. I, I will be like, that's how you light a fire. And then they'll just throw it away and we'll be done with it. Whoa, whoa. See, look at that, that is incredible. Now, of course, that match is the first thing that's struck and lit, but most of the time, your wood is not going to catch on fire. I'm gonna show you how you can keep this going from a very small match, or if you have a ferro rod like this on your knife. So let me show you a few of the different things that you can use as tinder. Uh, there's definitely man-made ones. So if you were a survivalist, one of the things that a lot of people do is they take cotton balls like this, full of Vaseline, they just swab Vaseline on them, they throw it in a plastic bag, and then in case you need it, you know, you fluff this up, you can take your ferro rod and you can light it. Look how fast that lights. Now that will go almost the whole time we're talking about tinder, I imagine, let me move it off to the side here. Uh, another thing that's really good to use for tinder is dryer lint. You can grab that at any time and you can light that as well. It helps when you fluff it up a little bit. <laughs> move that off to the side as well. And then what I really enjoy doing is using this jute. Jute is some cordage, it's twine that you can bring with you, but then you can also use it as your fire starter. So you fluff it up just a little bit and this light's extremely fast. So these are all what I would consider man-made, even though that is plant-based. Now you can use other things like dry grass. You can use these dry branches, which if you stick those on there, you know, they're a little bit larger diameter, so it might be harder to light from just uh, your ferro rod. Uh, these right here are beech leaves. They're extremely dry. They were on the tree for a long time. They'll definitely light really quickly. Uh, anything in the forest that's dry and small diameter Fluffy is really nice. You can take peelings off of pine bark. You can get them going. Uh, all of these are important to think about for tinder. Okay, let's talk about how to stack your wood. Before I start this fire, I also wanna mention it's really important to be responsible starting fires. Get a fire pit, put everything in the fire pit. Make sure you're in a cleared area. There's no dry grass, dry leaves, anything around you. There's no trees above you so that you can light them on fire and that you're keeping your fire to a manageable size because the last thing you want to do is start a forest fire. Only you can prevent forest fires. Only you. Okay, now let's start with the teepee. Essentially put your tinder in the middle and then you start stacking kindling around it. Bigger pieces get stacked on the outside as it gets ignited. 
So this teepee method is my tried and true method. It's what Haley and I use when we go camping in the woods. Should we both light them at the same time? Um, we can take turns and then I can film you. Made a little hollowed out area in the snow away from the wind and then use the dry side of the bark to be the bottom here. And then I'm gonna start with my teepee and then build bigger pieces out, leaving a space where I can put all this dry tinder that we've already collected from the aspen trees right underneath. You just wanna make sure you get the tinder right there in the middle, you get some good flammable stuff, and then you build a little bit bigger sticks, a little bit bigger beyond that on the outside, and then you can put actually really big stuff if you wanted to even around all of this or add it once you've lit it. But before I light this, let me show you the log cabin. This is a log cabin, much like Lincoln Logs just stacks them this way, then this way, then this way, and you just go up. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some big ones on the bottom, and then you're going to stack some kindling, and then put the tinder right on top of that, so that when you take your match, you can actually reach up underneath and light the tinder in there, and then it's gonna hit a sequence of layers that go up into this. Now everybody knows probably that fire needs fuel and oxygen for it to burn. So what you have here is the fuel that is spaced in a way that it lets a lot of oxygen in. And this thing will go up very quickly and you won't need to do too much to it once you light it. But you gotta be careful not to build it too big as well. The last one is the reverse pyramid. You can start with big chunky logs that can be wet and mossy. You put those on the bottom and then you work your way up. This is often called the upside down fire because it's a little different than the teepee. You're actually putting the small stuff at the very top. I like pyramid because it resembles the shape. It is similar to the log cabin, but you don't leave gaps in the wood. Stack the bottom logs together and then move up to the next layer, stack them tightly and smaller and smaller until you get to the top. This is a great fire to cook on. Now it won't turn into a blazing fire quite as fast, but it's great for a low maintenance fire. So the stacking techniques aren't rocket science, but at least you should know that they exist. So that's the basics about how to build a fire. We didn't really talk about how to light a fire. When I get to that video, I'll put links up there and down in the description. Okay, now let's light it. Oh, like the video if you want to see more fire videos. And that's the basics of lighting a fire. This is all continued education for the book Haley and I wrote, Mother Nature is Not Trying to Kill You, available in bookstores near you. Actually, you can also get it on our Patreon, which is cheaper than you can get it at the bookstore, and we'll sign it and send it to you. So I definitely suggest checking that out. We'll look at more complicated methods in the future, but we're definitely gonna get to wildlife coming up in future videos very soon. We'll see you then.